Good morning, Reptile Army. I'm gonna start the vlog out with a crazy clutch that just hatched out. It was actually a pinstripe female bred to a vanilla red stripe. And we have a bunch of combinations of stuff like this. We have like, you know, pinstripe red stripe stuff, which is what we would expect. We have a bunch of pinstripes. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And this would be actually here, what they call a vanilla pinstripe here. So again, nothing too crazy there, right? And you know, when you start hatching snakes, you start to go, all right, well, I think I've got a pin, I've got a vanilla, I got a red stripe. What's gonna happen? Well, this is the mystery. Look at this snake right here that hatched out I don't know what the heck it is I mean look at it compared to the other snakes right here what stands out in here now again it's just a pinstripe it's just a vanilla and it's just a red stripe so you start to wonder like is there something allelic going on or is there some like hidden gene going on but I'm telling you what I'm assuming this is a vanilla pinstripe red stripe but it shouldn't look anything like this I have no idea why this snake hatched out why it looks the way it looks or if it's just a, if you mix those three genes together typically when you get an allelic animal it's like if you mix two genes together you get something really different wacky that you didn't expect maybe it's a case where when you mix these three genes together you get something really wacky but I'm telling you what there is no way that I ever expected this snake to hatch out and what a way to start the day I mean think about it you know I opened up the incubator this morning I walked in there. I was like, hey, what's going on in the incubator today? I opened this box and I'm like, what in the world is that? I was like, holy cow. So I am super excited. No idea what to do with it. That's the only bummer is when you hatch something like this, you have no choice but to keep it, raise it up and breed it because you can't sell it. You don't know what it is and really you wouldn't want to sell it, right? Because it's such an amazing animal. So look at that clutch of snakes right there. I mean, it is crazy to think that all of these hatched out and all of them look similar, but that one little gem is like, what is going on? Let me know in the comments what you think is going on and what I should do with it. I'm definitely excited to find out what the deal is with in the future. It seems like every year that goes by, I have more and more mystery animals that I'm gonna work with. Pretty soon I'm gonna have a whole collection of stuff. I don't even know what's going on, but nevertheless, it's a great way to start the day and I hope that your day is absolutely amazing. It's been a minute since we updated you on the Fly River Turtles. They're doing absolutely wonderful. Of course, these are just quarantine tanks for a while. They'll eventually get a giant exhibit at the Reptile Zoo expansion for sure. And you can see we've got all like the pH and we got all kinds of things that we're just kind of following along. You know, it is important to have a little bit of alkalinity. We also keep a little bit of salt water in there, about one tablespoon per gallon, to be honest with you. So they're a little bit brackish. That keeps the fungal down, stuff like that. So right now they're eating well. They're eating algae wafers. They're eating some blueberries and stuff like that. Unfortunately, so far we haven't been able to get them to take it out of our hand. That is what we're shooting for us to make sure that they get so comfortable with us that they'll take food out of our hands. So that way when you guys come to see them at the Reptarium, you can have an interaction with them where you're feeding them apples or bananas or whatever the case may be. But they are doing very, very well. We actually stripped the gravel out of there to be totally honest with you because they're having a problem picking up the food in the gravel. But we are gonna put some, it's called Tahiti sand that's actually gonna be down in the bottom here too, which is something that they can kind of bury in. It actually good for their shell, all that type of stuff. And you can still see the food when it goes on, but that's coming here within the next week or so. But I wanted to update you on these guys. They're absolutely ripping it. They're unbelievable. I cannot wait to put them on display here at the Reptarium. They are some of the coolest animals I've ever owned. You know, it's always a bummer when you come to the end of the breeding season with the colubrids. And it appears right now that we're basically done with having any more eggs. It's the last clutch of eggs was laid the other day. And this, of course, is just a beautiful granite Max Max. And all these animals in here are now going to start getting conditioned to go to sleep, basically, essentially is what's happening. But uh, they all look so amazing. I mean, to be honest with you, they don't look very beat up, which sometimes happens at the end of the breeding season. That's just a testament to Lori and the crew working hard to keep these guys going and stuff like that. And you know, my entire life, all I've ever really done is work with reptiles, right? I mean, that's all I've really cared about. That's that single thing that just kind of keeps me rolling all the time. And it's just really all I've really ever thought about, right? And to be honest with you, I think that this year, in particular, there's been more pressure on the reptile hobby than there ever has been when it comes to laws and legislation. And I'll be honest with you, it scares the living crap out of me. I mean, there is nothing more scary than the fact of what's going on right now. That's why I really encourage you guys to, to definitely support US Ark because if you don't support US Ark and we lose the ability to keep these animals, I mean, take for instance, North Carolina right now is facing several laws. Some of them would be complete outlawing completely of all reptiles in the city of Riley. The entire entire state is talking about stuff like educational show bans where literally like we take these animals to schools and stuff like that and we wouldn't be able to do that anymore if we lived in North Carolina if this law passed and and you know you might think well I don't live in North Carolina but the truth is the next one might be Michigan the next one might be your 
state. You know, it's really important to get behind organizations like US Ark. There really isn't any eggs to be laid yet, but we still have a bunch of babies. I mean, take a look at these right here. These are what, Abbott's Okatees? Yep, these are just Abbott Okatee corn snakes. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, you know, I just, I can't imagine life without these animals. I mean, like, it would be insane. I mean, all that we're doing at the Reptarium is based in, in education, right? You know, we want people to come in and educate. We go out to zoo to use, to schools, all that type of stuff. And it's really scary, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. Looks like this clutch wasn't so good, went kind of bad, but this other clutch is just a bunch of albino corn snakes and some, just one little normal corn snake here. What is the deal here? This Oh, this is albino reverse Okatees. These are absolutely beautiful. And then this one is actually an aneurysmic from another clutch. That's this clutch, it only had two good eggs looking at it but but again you know I sit back and I think about like what will happen if 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we can't do educational shows. I mean, we all remember that time in school when the animal guy came in and brought an animal, and it was just a really special time. And I don't understand what legislators are thinking. And by the way, look at how gorgeous this clutch is. This is actually a, a, a Okatee scaleless bred to a het Okatee scaleless. And we have a bunch of scaleless Okatees, a bunch of het scaleless Okatees. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely beautiful. But you know, again, 30 years ago, I could have never imagined the hobby to go where it is today right I mean we've grown so much as a hobby to where it used to be just like closet breeders you know like no one even knew was going on one or two pet shops maybe specialty pet shops now every pet shop has reptiles there are millions and millions and millions of people that are keeping reptiles this is just some more corn snakes looks like some albino reverse okatees here and some okatee corns that will be had for albino looks like a couple eggs left to hatch here but you know the hobby has come so far in the 30 years I've been doing this 30 plus years I've been doing this it's crazy I could have never imagined this but I also can't imagine the fact that maybe in another 10 years we won't be able to do this that's ridiculous and and listen I'm not like a guy that believes in not having some sort of regulation I can understand that maybe you don't want someone that has a, a, a king cobra next to you or something like that in your house I get that it, I, although I think that there's reasons for everything you know I'm not an anti-legislation guy what it is I'm a responsible legislation guy right and by the way these are that red line albino corn snake that gets super red not all of them a hatch yet but i tell you what they are absolute rippers and my point is is that you know we need to be kind of supporting again advocacy groups like usr so that they can protect the future of the hobby for us right you know and that we can keep these beautiful snakes and beautiful reptiles and whatever you happen to keep for for many generations to come and that does mean that we have to be really responsible too you know i mean there are so many beautiful i mean look at this snake right here this tangerine albino honduran milk snake i mean absolute rippers and again my whole life has been dedicated to one thing and that's reptiles and animals and 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 to see this year what's been happening has been really kind of ridiculous i mean like scary beyond belief to be totally honest with you and we have to make sure that we kind of nip this in the bud by the way look at this false water cobra look at its threat display right now Ooh, doggy that is an absolutely beautiful snake and these guys can get pretty big six seven foot long and of course they flatten out and that's why they call them false water cobras because they almost look like a little cobra but the fact is they are have a real mild venom but nothing too major at all i've been bitten by this girl a few times and nothing has happened but but my point is, I just wanted to kind of tell you guys, you know, let, listen, buckle up, guys. We've got to grow together as a hobby, as a community right now. Support US Arc. You know, hey, Reptile Army is about supporting US Arc. So go to reptilearmy.com and you can get on that. We donate money to US Arc. We'll continue to donate money to US Arc as well as other advocacy groups and other conservational type stuff. So, you know, it's, it's more important than ever that we band together. And I'm not just talking about you and me. I'm talking about every other YouTuber. We need to be one, right? We can't be a separate thing. Or this hobby won't even be here 10 years from now so uh, I couldn't imagine how it is but I tell you what I'm gonna fight as hard as I can to keep this thing going so I actually got uh, went out in the back and we had a hibiscus plant going and she just happened to bloom a few of her sweet little beautiful flowers here you can actually feed off hibiscus flowers to a lot of vegetable eating animals because they're actually super nutritious they're very good for them and uh, and honestly it's really cute to see them eat flowers in general so uh, Dixie after being such a hard-working mom I thought what a great way to celebrate her having her first eggs by giving her a beautiful flower What a beautiful girl. Thanks for making such a huge mess. 
So being a new mom, she's always, always, always eating right now. So she's trying to pack on back the calories and stuff like that. So as you can see, that's not really what we want to happen out here. But when she's eating like as much as she is, she's gonna poop a lot. So we gotta, gotta deal with that. So uh, Mike, I need your help. That's all right. <laughs> And again, I couldn't imagine life without seeing this, you know? I mean, this is just so amazing. Now, I, I'll be honest with you, it's not that amazing because she laid the eggs all over the place, but this is a pinstripe female and she was bred to a black pewter lesser cypress, so a lot of really cool stuff. I'm gonna actually have to candle this clutch because it's all over the place. But again, can you imagine the fact that, you know, we've worked all our life to get to the point where we can do this and, and share this with the world and all that other stuff, and that somehow it could be completely taken away from us. And I'm not, again, I don't think that necessarily every legislator is a terrible person, but what I think is they're just misinformed, right? So what's happened down in North Carolina is there was an irresponsible reptile keeper that let a spitting cobra go. It escaped, right? And so now the knee-jerk reaction is, let's ban everything because of this one particular situation. And again, I'm not saying that they shouldn't do something. You know, I don't know what to do. I wouldn't want a spitting cobra running around my neighborhood either, to be totally honest with you. But just because one guy is irresponsible doesn't mean that you should punish everybody. And I think what the problem is, again, is the fact that reptiles are just so misunderstood Understood. And this is a large clutch, but again, so we have to really educate people. Gosh, they just keep coming. Look at all these eggs. This might be the largest clutch of the year, guys. I don't know. I can't wait to count these things. But again, we have to educate people on reptiles to make them know that they're not monsters. That if you're keeping a boa or even a Burmese python next door, that it's not going to endanger your kids or family or whatever the case is. So let's go ahead and see this clutch. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 13 eggs, that's right. That's the largest clutch of the year, 13 eggs. Our largest clutch so far was actually 11. Last year we did 12, we did 13. Largest clutch, that's absolutely incredible. And again, I just want things to continue on for generations to come because listen, reptiles have brought so much happiness, not only to myself, but we see over at the Reptarium when kids come in, their eyes light up, they get to hold animals. I mean, it's such a magical thing. And to think that there would be any chance that, that could be taken away is absolutely frightening to me. And so, like I said, together we have to band together and we have to educate people about how amazing and how safe these animals actually are so we can continue to do this for the next three, four, five generations to come. I've got this really cool little gift that came in today. I don't know what it is. It's actually, let's see, it says, Hi, Brian. You were part of the inspiration behind this book being published by Brad Walker. So it's obviously a book. And I'm thank you so much for uh, taking inspiration. I don't know what I did to deserve that, but I do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and see what it is. And it's empty. <laughs> well, there's gotta be a book in here. <laughs> like, what is going on? I was joking, I was joking. It, it's just wrapped up in a, a piece of paper here. So, all right, let's get this, let's get going. Come on now. All right, so what is it in? Oh, it's like a kid's book. And it's called Lucy's Lost in the Everglades. So it's gotta obviously be about a, let's see, so it's about a green tree python that is obviously washed down the river and then it goes into the Everglades. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an alligator. It meets a blue heron, a corn snake, Jeff. So it's a really cool kids book. That's really awesome. I appreciate it. As a matter of fact, we do a lot of these reading things uh, for kids over, as a matter of fact, if you guys want every Tuesday, link in the description is actually a kids book that we read over at the Reptarium and do like a 20 minute kind of question and answer thing. Really cool. So uh, maybe we'll include this one, Brad. I appreciate you and uh, I can't wait till it's published because I hope it's much success and thank you so much for sending it to me. Do I have cheats for you? I do. Yeah. Let's go. I'm only giving you one though, okay? So I'm kind of I'm kinda of lying to you right now, so you can probably put this way. She's like, oh I'm not. How about that? I'm not gonna trade trust now. <laughs> like, Look, hold up, watch. Yeah. 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 Immediately, bro. Salt! I'm only coming down for two flowers, not one. <laughs> Come on. So excuse me, so I was a puffer of the bouquet. No, baby. What are you looking at me like that for? Oh, some bruise contracts. Oh, that's a variant. <laughs> You're pretty, you know that? Not as pretty as these flowers. Oh, maybe you are. Yeah, you pretty flat. You're prettier than the flowers. This is for me, and that's for you, okay? 
Uh, let's, let's make sure we have a good. No, don't she drop that. dropped it on you, don't dude. She's that. like, give me that other flower. Don't, boy. don't eat. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hey, you look here. Look here. All right. There's, there's both flowers. Okay. You already heard me. What, what, what did it? Was it really that bad? Was it really that bad? Holy moly, take a look at this right now. Of course, Night Fury just shed out completely perfect. Doesn't even need a soak or anything like that, but look at the glimmer on that animal right there. Unbelievable. Every time it grows and every time it sheds, it just gets more and more spectacular. Again, it's getting bigger and bigger. This is gonna one day be 15, 18 foot long, this big around, and it's just gonna glimmer in the sun. I mean, the rainbow effect on that I am absolutely blown away at how beautiful it is. And again, that pied retic is basically like Night Fury, but just with the white blotching. So all of those spots on the pied retic we just got will look just like Night Fury when it gets bigger too, which is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. Listen guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's vlog and don't mind that I kind of went on a little bit of a rant about potential legislation, but I really do hope that you guys will help us kind of get through this, support US Ark and all that type of stuff, join the Reptile Army. And if you did enjoy this video, here's a less ranty video video playlist right over here. You could also do me a favor, hit that subscription button on this side. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.